It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. What prompted me to make this video was this particular comment right here on Twitter. The comment says, Baby W is busy doing his anti-racist reading for today. It is never too soon to start discussing race, equity, and allyship with your kids. Honestly, Anti-Racist Baby by Dr. Elam has lessons that we could all benefit hearing from. Start them while they're young. It seems as though that the supposed anti-racist activists are also now coming after your kids. And so for this video, I'll provide various examples on how these anti-racist people are coming after your kids through books, through schools, and all that kind of jazz. Let's start off with the book called Anti-Racist Baby. Anti-Racist Baby is born, not bred. Anti-Racist Baby is raised to make society transform. While it's true that when people are born, like we don't have any sort of you know knowledge beforehand of what kind of person to become, so some people become activists, that is true. Some people become criminals, that's also true. Some people become like movie stars, whatever kind of career that a country has, they become based upon their personal interests. However, I don't think it's a good idea to force like any sort of interest onto your baby or onto your kids because I'm sure that they can also try to come up with their own personal ideas of what they like at an early age by themselves and try to fix it when they become teenagers. Because to me, to force them to become an activist, an anti-racist activist, it's not the best move unless they really truly want to become an activist. And however, I don't think that kids are at an age where they actually know what they actually want. So yeah, let's try to, you know, indoctrinate the kids while they're still young. Babies are taught to be racist or anti-racist. There's no neutrality. Take these nine steps to make equity a reality. I love how you're trying to paint this as, well, you see, you either make them to an activist to be anti-racist or make them a racist. And honestly to me, there is like no difference between the two words because anti-racist end up be like the most racist people ever. But to uh, answer this whole entire point about like anti-racist versus racist baby, it's true that, this, that the ideas and that the formats of your values are actually instilled to your kids, that is true. And so most people in this country, they raise their kids to be colorblind, you see, because when you raise your kids to be colorblind, of course, they're not going to judge people entirely off their skin color. They're going to judge them by their character. And so I think that when you try to raise your kids, of course, not make them racist. That's obvious. But don't make them to a, like, you know, some sort of activist either. As far as this idea of equity, what they really mean by equity is equality of outcomes. So every single time they say equity is equality of outcomes. Number one, open your eyes to all skin colors. Anti-racist baby learn all the colors, not because race is true. If you claim to be colorblind, you deny what's in front of you. Ha <laughs> ha, oh my God. I swear, like these activists, every single time they talk about colorblindness, they have no idea what people mean by colorblindness. It's not denial of, of course, looking at people and saying, oh my god, you're, you're white or what. It's not denying that. Of course, most people know that there are different shades of color. When people say colorblindness, what they mean is that they're not gonna judge you based upon your characteristics. So raising your kids to be colorblind is a good thing. Are you trying to say that kids who are growing up should not be raised colorblind? Number two, use your voice to talk about race. No one would see racism if we only stay silent. If we don't name racism, it won't stop being so violent. They really, really trying to emphasize to indoctrinate these kids to become activists. They really do. Number three, point out policy as the problem, not people. Some people get more while others get less because policies don't always grant equal access. Number four, there's nothing wrong with the people. Even though all races are not treated the same, we are all humans anti-racist baby can proclaim. Number five, celebrate our differences. 
anti-racist baby does not see certain groups as better or worse. Anti-racist baby loves a world that's truly diverse. It is so funny to me that they're saying that they have no sort of prejudices against any sort of people in this book. Because clearly these anti-racist people have made books like How to Be Like an Anti-Racist and also White Fragility. And in these books, they almost always try to blame the white people on everything. Oh, you see, because you're complaining about injustice, you have some sort of white fragility. Or you cannot be racist against somebody because of a certain skin color. So, they're trying to hide their propaganda behind the book to actually not show their true intentions. Because if they show their true intentions, then of course, everybody else would actually be against their ideas too. Number six, knock down a stack of cultural blocks. Anti-racist baby appreciate how groups speak, dance, and create as they choose. Anti-racist baby welcome all groups, voicing their unique views. Except for like white people, of course, because every single time a white person speak, they have to listen to the minority first before everybody else have a chance to listen to that person first because they're white. Number seven, confess when being racist. Nothing disturbs racism more when we choose to confess the racist ideas that we sometimes express. As tough for like these anti-racist activists who keep on saying that they cannot be racist against white people. But okay, I'm sure they're gonna express how racist they were by saying such nonsense. Oh wait, they never do that all the time. Number eight, grow to be an anti-racist. Anti-racist baby is always learning, changing, and growing. Anti-racist baby, stay curious about all people and isn't all-knowing. Number nine, believe we shall overcome racism. Anti-racist baby is full with the power to transcend my friend and doesn't judge a book by its cover, but read until the end. Another example of anti-racist activists coming after your kids is of course Cartoon Network. Black inventors, heroes, and leaders are often left out of history. Ask yourself as you're learning who is the focus, why, question the story, the crystal gems say be anti-racist, visit www.crystalgemspeakup.com to learn more. I find it so ironic that Cartoon Network is telling people to listen to black voices and black people, but at the same time, they fired people like the guy from the Boondocks for his content for being too offensive, so... It seems to me like all of this right now, this whole entire like PDF is actually some sort of white of virtue signal. But um, unfortunately I cannot play the video clip right now in this video because of copyright reasons. So the only way we could hear about this video is through the audio that I'm gonna play right now. And so without further hesitation, let's listen to the audio. Class, can anyone tell me who invented the light bulb? How is it? That's not entirely true. The light bulb could more rightfully be attributed to Lewis Latimer, the black inventor behind the filament inside the bulb. And already we're just starting off with a lie. While it's true that Lewis Latimer is a guy that helped improve the light bulb, Thomas Edison himself created the light bulb. So this is already propaganda. I mean, it's already propaganda with the anti-racist ideology, but they're flat out lying about history too. Wait, is that it? Hold on. We're not going to mention why he invented the filament? To create a better standard of living for people who had only just been freed from slavery? Are we going to ask why kids are apparently learning about Thomas Edison? Thomas Edison! Ugh. And not learning about Louis Latimer? These textbooks are incomplete. There were black Roman warriors, black medieval knights, black classical musicians, black cowboys, black fighter pilots. Where are they? I worry about you humans because you only live, what, about a hundred years? You rely on these stories to know your own history. Thanks to systemic racism, most of your storytellers prioritize white accomplishments, which leaves you with an incomplete picture. As I'm kind of curious how these people behind this production is getting the idea that somehow we never teach about black history. Like, if you go to college, there's entire studies dedicated to black history. Now, as far as general American history, we talk about white people, we talk about black people, we talk about the Native Americans, the Hispanics. So, when you're talking about general history, we talk about, like, different people, regardless of the race. And you want to focus more about, like, black history, there's always college for black history studies. 
And so that is not true in the slightest to say that we never preserve or talk about history for black people in this country. As far as this idea about systemic racism, do you honestly think that kids at that young of an age know like the terminology for that kind of word? Because it seems as though that only adults might actually know about that word. And so if you're gonna talk about systemic racism, are you not gonna try to you know define what systemic racism actually is? My friend at the NYC Department of Education has to take decolonizing therapy. Implicit bias workshop and specialty sessions for December. On Wednesday, December the 16th at 12 o'clock p.m., session description says, participant will explore the status differences between sexes and genders, cross-cultural comparisons, gender role specialization, cultural stereotypes, discrimination, gender roles, and status in the family, economy, religion, science, other social institutions, victimization and gender, recent social changes. Decolonizing therapy, Wednesday, December the 16th at 1 o'clock p.m. Implicit bias workshop for parents and guardians on December the 14th and on Thursday, December the 17th at 6 o'clock p.m. Must attend both sessions. It is so sad and pathetic that these parents and these teachers are being forced to be indoctrinated into these re-education camps, I'm sorry, critical race theory, to show just not how racist they are. It's so amazing to me how all of this just started after the death of George Floyd, and here we are just trying to re-educate people to becoming more racist. But that's not the only school that I found with these sort of, sort of like indoctrination methods for people. Teaching math through a social justice lens as racial inequality soars on a natural radar, math teachers are increasingly bringing social justice questions into their classrooms to help students see the subjects relevant and recognize they can use it to become agents in the world. Teachers are drawing on high profile issues such as policing patterns, the spread of the pandemic, and campaign finance to explore math concepts from a place to proportionally and algebraic functions. They're using math to help students understand phenomenon as variety as food, desserts, disaster aids, and college admission test scores. A new book that has provided 22 high schools based upon social injustice and outlined the theory to support them has become a bestseller. Oakland Unified School District sees racism as a pandemic a teacher professional development from August. The pandemic of racism. How does white supremacy show up in our schools? OUSD and the Movement for Black Lives. Black staff, students, and family are asking OUSD community to act now. Address anti-black racism, attitudes, instances, practices, and policy advocate racial justice, and stand for the movement for black lives, create spaces of honest dialogue, community, and equity, racist justice, a proactive enforcement of policies, practices, attitudes, and actions that produce unequitable power, access, opportunities, treatment, impacts, and outcomes for all. And of course, they have the pyramid of white supremacy there. Equity, just and fair inclusion, an equitable society is one in which all people can participate and prosper. The work of equity creates conditions that allow all to reach their potential. Anti-racism, expressing ideas that racial groups are equal and not need developing and supporting policies that reduce racial inequality. Implicit bias is a bias that results from the tendency of process information based upon unconscious associations and feelings even when they are contrary to one's consciousness or desired beliefs. Culturally responsive involves self-reflection, continuous gathering and explanation of data, participatory and relational practices, erasing awareness of inequities and making adjustments to serve diverse groups of students. Here's a summary of highlights from last night's school board meeting. And of course, of course, on December the 9th, they have a committee about equity and anti-racism. So you see guys, social justice 
is not just the college campus students. Like the ideas of social justice are literally affecting every part of society. From the government to school kids to the video games and so on. You see guys, like they're trying to get kids where they're at, at their most vulnerable. And it's just so sad, it's almost religious like to see how they want to indoctrinate kids with their ideas and stuff. But they're not just some sort of small minority. Don't make people fool you in thinking that they're a small minority. They're starting to get every single aspect of life. Like they have the schools, they have the freaking government stuff. Like, watch my playlist about anti-racism to see like how they're going into like almost all parts of society from government and so on. So anyway guys, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below and I'll talk to you guys next time.